Today, we're going to start with an introduction to SAS On Demand for academics. You should have already gotten a SAS profile and an account for SAS On Demand for academics. If you don't know how to do that, you should have gotten an email from me telling you. Check your email. Okay, first thing, you need to log in. So you're going to click up in the address bar here and type in support.sas.com ctx3 slash soda reg for SAS on demand registration. This page will come up. Put in your email address you registered for your SAS profile with. Should be a national university email. And your password. And click enter. Notice something. Your SAS server ID, what you log into SAS on demand with, is not going to be your email. Okay, now that you remember what that is, go over and click run client. Write down that SAS server user ID if you don't remember it. Now you see the SAS web editor. That's where you're going to type in that user ID. In my case, mine's annemaria.demars. Your password is going to be the same password you had for your SAS profile. Now here you are in the SAS web editor. Click on the bottom for libraries and click on SAS help. Scroll down until you find the heart data set. This is just so you can take a look at it. So double click on that data set and then you can see the different types of variables. You can scroll up over to the right, see all of them, get some examples of how they're measured. Okay, so much for that. Now go and click on code and start typing proc contents data equals sas help dot heart semicolon. Always end with a semicolon. And then type run. After you type run, click on the little run guy and this will come up. Just a couple of points. You'll notice that I typed some of the words in capital letters. SAS is not case sensitive. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do that. But I find when I'm teaching, it's often easier for people to know that things that are typed in capital letters, those are SAS reserved keywords. In other words, to get a proc contents, you always type proc contents. Data equals the SAS help dot data dot whatever the data set name is, in this case, heart, can change from one program to the other. SAS help dot heart means that you're going to look in the SAS help directory and find a data set named heart. So that's how you reference data sets in SAS. Now let's take a look at our output. We've got the contents procedure and that tells me the names of each variable, the type if they're numeric or character, the length if they're eight characters long or seven or however many, and usually a descriptive label for them. You can save your results. In this case, I clicked on the W for Word. And when you save your results, it's not going to save them on the SAS server. It's going to download them to your computer. OK, let's go back to code. I look at my, uh, my variables and decide, ah, I think I want to do some frequency distributions and maybe some charts. If you just type proc freak and you don't specify any variables, you're going to get all of the variables in the data set. That slash with the asterisk, that's a comment. So you start a comment with a 
forward slash and asterisk and you end it with an asterisk and backward slash. So proc freak data equals sas help dot hard run I can highlight that so it'll just run that part of the program. Click on my little running guy. And you see that I get frequency distributions for all of the variables in the data set. Now I'm going to click on code again and write some more code. This time I want to do a graph. So I'm going to type proc chart data equals sas help dot heart again as you might guess semicolon and every statement with a semicolon. V bar which stands for a vertical bar chart and age at death. I know how that variable is named because I looked at the proc contents. And again, I'm going to type run with a semicolon. Select the code I just typed and click on my running guy. And this gives me a bar chart. It's, it's a histogram. It's not as nice as you would get with the actual paid for SAS program, but hey, it'll do. I click on the W again to download it, and now I have that chart saved on my desktop. I want to save my program, so that just is clicking on the disk. I'd like to create a folder for my project. I think that's always a good idea to do. I'm going to call this one Heart Study. Don't put in spaces. I put in an underscore. Save it. And now I have a folder named Heart Study. And I'll just leave the program named Program 1, which is the default. If I go and look at my folders, click on the arrow to look at the contents of Heart Study. And there you can see there's my program.